Welcome to Film in 5D, the show about everything film with the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock, and this week, I have some more audio tips and tricks for you guys. More audio tips and tricks? Yep, tips and tricks. Audio, you know, it's pretty important. Most people say that it's more important than video. Yeah, I can attest to that. Well, you're an audio guy, so you're kind of biased. I mean, have you ever seen The Artist? Probably, like, the best film I've ever seen. Like, minimal audio. Yeah. Dead uh... silence of parts. So you tell me audio is that damn important after you go see the artist. Okay, so for this week's tutorial, I thought it might be good to talk about some corrective audio techniques to fix stuff like this. Let's play that back. I thought it might be good to talk about some corrective audio techniques to fix stuff like this. There, much better. So if you shoot with a lot of clients, you're bound to run into this problem. More than likely, you're shooting a customer testimonial and they forgot to turn off their cell phone. Of course, you can ask them to retake it, but what if it's some big name CEO who doesn't have a bunch of time to reshoot? You can always fix it in post. So take your clip into Audition, or whatever audio editing program you use, and pull up your audio frequency graph. Now listen to the portion of the clip in question. Once you have the beep or whatever sound you're trying to remove narrowed down, Highlight it using the Marquee Selection tool, or my preferred, the Lasso tool. Once you have the unwanted area highlighted, you can either delete it completely, which actually works just fine in many cases, or you can click Effects, Auto Heal. Using Auto Heal will duplicate the frequencies around your selection, which will most likely be room sound, and use them to replace the inside of your selection. This works much like the Content Aware feature from Photoshop. It's not perfect, but at first glance, it's pretty much seamless. This is probably what I use Audition for most nowadays. Now, I used to use it for removing noise, which I showed you how to do in this episode, but I don't really bother removing noise anymore, unless I'm working on a short film or something. However, in that episode, I also mentioned how to remove pops and clicks at the end of clips using Premiere. Well, this can also be done in Audition, and is actually much more exact. When working with your sequence in Audition, if you have your track selected, you can press Shift plus I. Your cursor will move to the nearest point where there is zero amplitude, and you can use this to set an accurate in and out point and all of your pops will be gone. You see, the reason you get pops or clicks when you cut from the beginning or end of a clip is because you're actually cutting the audio where the waveform is on its up or down slope, rather than absolute zero. Now if you use the audition method, you cut at absolute zero, therefore removing any clicks or pops. And since each second of audio is usually around 48,000 samples, depending on what rate you're recording at or editing at, using this method will pretty much cut your clip at the exact same position as it would have if you are using Premiere alone, which uses a timeline, which uses frames. So, you get way way better results, much more exact. This makes this method much better than the one I showed you in a previous episode, where I fade in and fade out clips while overlapping to hide the pops, since doing it this way makes it harder to cut the tail end of an audio out without actually fading out the wanted audio. The last tip I wanted to give you guys today is pretty simple and can be done from pretty much within any non-linear editor out there. And I've always gotten the same question online with regards to audio, like how do I balance my underlying music with dialogue? While there are many factors that go into this, like not picking ridiculously obnoxious music for example, the thing that I find helps most is actually an effect. It's called treble. It's an effect that when applied to a dialogue track will help your voice to pierce through the other sounds, without having to lower the music track to the point where you can't even hear it anymore. When using treble for this purpose, I usually set it to around 3 decibels, but you might want to mess around with it on your own clips and see what level works best for your situation. But that's it for this week. If you have any questions, you can send them via at mentions to our Twitter page at twitter.com forward slash filming 5 d or if you're on Facebook, post them on our wall at this link here. We'll be back next week with a spooky sketch. Dude, so uh, how about them refs? How about them refs? You know, They're the all gone. Yeah, like, I know. Last Monday, dude, I'm a Packers fan, and last Monday was just... Woo! I didn't watch that because I... I like all the memes out there. Like the Brett Favre one is like, yo, interceptions are touchdowns now. Yeah, yep. I like yep. that one. That was funny. I'm a big Brett Favre fan, but that was funny. See you next week. So if you shoot with a lot of clients, you're bound to run into this problem. It's still going super slow. I don't know why we didn't fix that last time because the last time I got here, I remember running through this problem. Now it's going a little faster. Still too slow, considering I can only see half of the screen. Now if I can see all the screen, we have a decent tolerance monitor, then maybe.